today on what it's like 1962 imperial custom but before getting into all of it i'm jay welcome to what it's like the automotive channel that puts the spotlight on the cars not often talked about we cover the classics vintage some exotics lots of orphan cars and cars off the beaten path dive in deep with specs Talk about the design of these cars and show what these cars are like. If that sounds like a channel that you will totally dig, subscribe and hit the bell icon next to it to never miss a video. Imperial was always Chrysler's premium option, but it was offered as Chrysler Imperial in the very beginning. Imperial did become its own make in 1955 and was offered as its own make until 1975. It took some time off and then it came back in 1981 through 1983. In six generations, 1962 falls in the second generation, which had a production run from 1957 to 1966, known as series SY1 LMH. 1962 Imperial was offered in three models or trim series, Custom, followed by the Crown, followed by LeBaron. When you bought the Custom trim, this is what came standard, constant control, power steering, total contact, power brakes, air foam padded seats, front and rear, as well as full volume air foam seat backs, rear center armrest, padded safety steering wheel, Carpets, vanity mirror, outside left mirror, three cigarette lighters, backup lights, windshield washer, electric clock, factory undercoating, and tubeless tires. If you stepped up to the crown, the crown gave you all of that, plus power windows, six-way seats, front armrests, but that was only available in the Southampton edition. Stepping up to the LeBaron, Chrome moldings at wheel openings, power window vents, carpet luggage compartment, options. We're not getting into all of the options, but here are a few that stand out. Power windows, power vent windows, power locks, but you have to have the power windows in order to get the power locks. Autopilot, yes, that's what they called cruise control. Automatic headlight dimmer, rear window defog, 321 accessory group. Heater, radio, rear speaker, power antenna, door edge protector, left toggle switch control, outside mirror, tinted glass, six-way power seats, power windows for $627.05 on four-door custom. That is equivalent to spending $6,298.80 in the year 2023. 1962 Imperial Custom could be had as a two-door hardtop or a four-door hardtop built on the Chrysler D body platform designed by Virgil Exner. The 1962 Imperial saw a facelift, so let's compare the 61 on top, 62 on the bottom. Starting in the front, the overall shape is the same, with the biggest change being the fins in the rear have been clipped. The grills have been revised. Hood ornament is upright on the 62. Side trim has been revised. Looking at the side profile, look at the trim line, how it starts at the top of the fender and runs the belt line of the car at a slight angle on both cars. The C-pillar trim is different. The fins on the 61 are huge, and I wonder if they are bigger than the 59 Cadillac fins. 62 doesn't have the added trim at the rear bumper section. Tail light placement are in different locations as well as different designs. Moving to the rear, a better look. I just realized the back glass are totally different. Wrap around back glass on the 62. Also, the 61 looks like it has stainless on the roof. The 62 has trim on the fins where the 61 doesn't. Both the 61 and 62 have a center line, though styled different. Moving inside, looking at the gauges in the gauge cluster, they look pretty much identical, with the only difference being the steering wheel has been revised. Which design do you like better? Let's talk specs, 227.1 inches long, 81.7 inches wide. It rides a wheelbase of 127 inches. It weighs 4,765 pounds. 
price, $5,106, which is equivalent to you spending $51,290.45 in the year 2023. Total, 1962 Imperial production was 14,337 units. Total custom was 4,413 units. 3,587 of those were the four-door hardtop variety, which leaves 826 as the two-door hardtop variety. Moving on to engines, only one engine on offer, 413 cubic inch displacement V8, 6.8 liters. It's good for 340 brake horsepower, 4,600 RPM, 470 pound-feet of torque at 2,400 RPM with a bore of 4.2 inches and a stroke of 3.8 inches. Compression is 10 to 1. Features five main bearings. It's mated to a three-speed automatic torque flight, automatic transmission. Zero to 60 could be had in 8.1 seconds. Theoretical top speed, 121 miles per hour. Average fuel consumption, 9.6 miles to the gallon. And these are all baseline numbers. It doesn't tell me what rear end is in this car. And their final gear ratio could have a lot to do with acceleration, top speed, and fuel economy. Let's talk styling. Look at these headlights. Look at how they almost have this floating look about them while sitting on little pods. Also, check out the texture in the headlight bezels themselves. Also, the negative space behind the headlights. Turn signal indicators are tucked right underneath the front fascia. The bumper has a tiered section at the ends of the bumpers. The grill has a fine grill bar section that wraps behind the headlights. Lots of angles going on with this front fascia. Upright hood ornament, look at the hood opening. As far as the lines go, it's super smooth on top of the hood, except for the center line. Imperial badge in the front. Better look at the tiered section of the bumper, as well as another look at this headlight situation. These headlights are very interesting. I, I don't think, I can't think of another car off the top of my head that does headlights like the headlights on this 62 Imperial. Moving down the side, look at how aggressive the fenders are flared. Imperial is stamped inside the hubcaps. Tons going on with the front fender design. Side mirrors are mounted on the hood or fender section because of how wide this car is. Take a gander at the vent window situation. It's curved. Even the roof has lines as well as drip rails. Rear wheel wells, look at how aggressive this flare is. Beltline molding is in a crease in this sheet metal. Better look at the chrome slash stainless steel situation rear trim and taillights. Just look at the design of these rear taillights. Backup lights, gas filler door. Getting inside, look at how thick this door is. It has a lot of heft to it. Look at the different materials used on the door panel itself. This car has a wide armrest. Change holder slash door handle to pull the door shut, door handle to get out, power window switches. Coming down inside the pedal box down here, emergency brake, which is on the floor. Then you have the emergency brake release, high beam switch, and I think the other one is for the windshield wipers, but I'm not entirely sure. It might be for the wash feature. If you know in the comment section below, brake pedal, gas pedal. Here is what over the hood impression looks like. Here is what first person over the hood looks like. Up above, there are sun visors and they look like this. They're pretty big. Like here's my hand for reference. They're pretty long. Nice rear view mirror with daytime, nighttime feature in the center. This is how much space there is underneath the steering wheel. There's tons of space for me to put my hand underneath the steering wheel. Also, just take a look at this steering wheel design. Here is the ashtray. Here is the glove box. On to the button switches and knobs, starting on the left and moving right. And I just have to say real quick, there is a lot going on. The toggle switch controls the outside mirror. The green arrow at the top is for a turn signal indicator for the left-hand side. Push buttons for the transmission, reverse, neutral, drive, second, and first. Headlights, windshield wipers, as well as the wash feature in the center. And if that's the case, what is the second button on the floor for? Below that is the rear air control, cruise control, ignition, floor, 
air control, speedometer with brake warning light just a little bit below it, oil pressure, amp meter, trip odometer, clock, coolant temperature, gasoline gauge, high beam indicator, turn signal indicator, climate controls, the slider controls heat, low fan, high fan, defrost, air, light, just above the radio. That was a lot to take in. If you missed anything, here's a diagram explaining everything that we just went over. Coming to the rear door and opening it, this door has a lot of heft to it, just like the front door. The windows are all trimmed out. Power window switch, door lock, ashtray, lighter, door handle to get out. Just take a gander at the space that there is in the back of this Imperial. Here's what the front looks like from the back. Let's take a real quick gander at the greenhouse or the pillar to glass ratio. This car is really nice and airy. Look at that wraparound back glass. And that's what visibility looks like out the rear. It's got a nice big parcel shelf as well as a center armrest in the center. Nice big dome light as well as a coat hook. There's two coat hooks on that side actually. And same over here, there's coat hook here and as well as here. This looks like a light, the light switch for the dome light. That's a nice place for it. Look at how nice this is with all of the chrome. There's tons of chrome in this car. Here's the knee situation. These are concaved in, so they give you lots of room for your knees and feet. Transmission tunnel. It's almost like a divide robe rail. Getting under the hood, the hood release is inside. The 413 actually looks small in this car. The radiator support is pushed back and isn't in the nose of the car. There is a screen in front of the radiator to catch the bugs from hitting the radiator and possibly damaging the fins, which is a super nice feature to see. And the owner said that it was on there from the factory. Alternator, windshield washer bag, power brakes, single master cylinder. Right in front of that is for the cruise control, power steering, and the battery. On the positive side, cheaper than pre-1960s, high luxury, surprisingly roadable, tons of space inside. They are not often seen, so if you show up to the car show with one of these, you're probably the only one that would have it, and it definitely draws a crowd. Against it, questionable 1960 through 61 styling, still rust prone. They are thirsty. They are big Heavy car, spotty fit and finish. All right, now it's time for Would You Rather. Two scenarios today. In the first scenario, would you rather have a 1962 Lincoln Continental or 1962 Imperial Crown or 1962 Cadillac Fleetwood. I'm going to leave this here for a minute. If you need more time, feel free. Pause the video. Moving on to the second scenario. 1961 Imperial or 1962 Imperial or 1963 Imperial. I'm going to leave this here for a minute. If you need more time, feel free. Pause the video. Now it's time for Name That Tune. First person to give both the name of the band and song title, both correctly. First person to do so will have their comment pinned to the top of the comment section. Thank you all so much for coming out and watching this. If you'd like to get in touch with me, shoot me a comment in the comment section below or check out our Facebook group that correlates with this YouTube channel. If you don't have Facebook and would like to reach me, send me an email. All of that information will be linked in the description below. Just know I appreciate all of the support. And until next time, here are some scenes for our next episode. 1972 Dodge demon that's what's next on what it's like tune in thursday to catch that episode at 4 30 eastern pennsylvania time and until then toodaloo funniest sound i ever heard a papa whom a mama mama papa whom mau mau well i can't understand a single word